Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Ola Kule Kasumo and it's great to be on the show again. Nigeria on my mind. Uh, wow. Here's a question for you. How many ethnic groups are in Nigeria? Shoot us an answer on Twitter or Facebook. Fastest fingers. If you get the answer to this question right, then you will get a copy of this book that we are reviewing today. How many ethnic groups do we have in Nigeria? Fastest fingers. First. Ah, uh, well, we've got many. I won't tell you the answer. Um, but you'll probably stumble on it later on, <laughs> on this particular episode. Um, but <sighs> Nigeria is a beautiful country with so many ethnic groups. Some like to say tribes. I don't think so. I, I'm more comfortable using... Um, the terminology ethnic groups. I mean, if the Welsh form an ethnic group and the, and the um, Irish form an ethnic group, then the Jaws and the Shakiris and the Urobos should be ethnic groups. Don't you think so? Well, somebody may say that, that might just be semantics. But many years ago, before the British came here and, you know, um, put us together as a country in 1914. We were just uh, many, many kingdoms made up this place that we now currently call Nigeria. Many kingdoms with their different cultures and traditions and languages, ways of doing things. Uh, and they just were all there. Some were friends, some were enemies, rivals, fighting, um, trading in, in, in slaves and all that. It was just a very big place with many, many kingdoms. Now, um, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting when you explore the kingdoms that make up Nigeria. It's such beautiful history. One of the kingdoms that has been around for so long are um, the Zuru people. I've got a book here titled Zuru People of Northwest Nigeria. I didn't know about the Zurus until... I got sent a copy of this book, an aspect of Lena Cultural Heritage, written by Bawa K. Amos, and it opened me up to such exciting history. Oh, I just kept reading and reading because it, it just opened me, it just shows how diverse Nigeria is. This book is special, and we've got the author with us um, on this particular episode. They came in. We had a wonderful time with him, and you will just love Bawa Amos. Let's get to meet with him and enjoy the conversation we had. Prince Amos Bawa is a businessman and author who is passionate about history. Bawa hails from the Senchi extraction located in Southwest Zuru, the origin of Proto Lelna in Kebi State, Nigeria. He is an alumnus of Federal Polytechnic Bida in Niger State, where he obtained an HND in accounting and an advanced certificate in computer science. Bawa, a member of the Association of Nigerian Authors, has authored several books, including Chilela Calendar, Origin of Chilela, Burial Rites of Lelna, and Lelna, Boys and Girls, amongst others. He joins Channel's Book Club to discuss his book, Zuru People of Northwest Nigeria. Bawa, nice to have you on Channel's Book Club. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much. I love your attire. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. This, so this is, I mean, we are going to be looking at your book, which is about the Zuru people. That's right. Um, of Northwest Nigeria. Nigeria yes. Yeah, but this is how the Zuru's dress traditionally, right? Yes, historically. Tradition. Yes, historically, this is how we dress. This is our traditional regalia. There are so many uh, patterns of dressing, but this is the most common one. This is the most common. Yeah. This is a warrior's attire. Yes. Because the Zuru's are warriors, right? Yes, now, yes. Can you explain this attire? Uh, well, you have just said it all. Uh, once you dress like this, it means you are ready for war. The only thing here that is missing here is bow and arrow because we don't use gun. We don't use guns, we use bow and arrow. Yeah. And uh, even the bow and arrow, the arrow is, is, I'm afraid, is poisoned. Wow. Yes, so once they give you a shot, you left a shot that. You are, you are a gunner, you are there's gone. no. Yes. In fact, even if they miss the target, and it, as soon as it just brushes you, 
that poison as soon as it touches you. you is, that more, is, is that not the more reason why the attire should be more covered? Um, I mean, if something more protective. Well, this is history, right? There, there is actually history, back, but back those then. back then we don't have clothes. Yeah. These are animal uh, so this skin. So this is animal skin? Yes, this is animal skin. I got it from either ram or goat, like you can see. Wow. These are cowrie shells. Interesting. So it takes the rich to dress like this. So this is a rich man's attire back as, then? As it were. Back then? Yes. It will interest you in the book. I was just explaining that you use this. This we call it the quese. This is what you use to, to buy and sell then. And uh, you use it to pay dowry. Okay. Yeah. So now, as for engagement, rather, you engage a woman should you have a reason to marry her. So back in the days, if I was dressed like this, yes. and um, I approached a lady, uh, I, my chances were very high. You are there. I'm already there. You are I'm there. married. Yes. <laughs> because ladies, ladies appreciate in those days, mm -hmm. if you are a good wrestler, you are a warlord. A hunter. You are a good drummer. Okay. You're a good hunter. They left assured that you are married. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It will, it will take you ease to war a lady and, mm. and get her. Interesting. Yeah. Man, I just, it's so much of our culture, they're just gone, really. Yeah. And anyway, so that brings us to why we're here. Okay. The Zuru people of Northwest Nigeria. Look, you have, and this is not to flatter you, Nigeria owes you for this work. Well, it's okay. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Thank because you, when, a people have, when, the, when a people have lost their culture and their history and their story, then they are gone. That's true. I, isn't that true? That's true. And what you've done here is you have documented the story, the history, the culture of the Zuru people. people yes. Tell our viewers are probably curious. What's in here? Well, uh, it's all about culture, and uh, uh, like the content of the book. There, in fact, at one point it will interest you that I didn't grow up in the village. Mm. Yes, and uh, if you go to the book, I think I was introduced to my land in '86 or there. Yeah, you spoke about how you went so, there. I mean, when I saw my people, the way they were dressed how they live their life and the rest of them. I picked up interest. So I started... You were fascinated? From, yes, yes. I start asking my grandparents a lot of questions, my mother and the, my dad at the same time. In fact, I started writing this, if you allow me, since when I was in secondary school. Wow. So at one point, I abandoned the whole thing and, you know, but because it's in me, I had to pick up... One thing, people who appreciate culture are people who did not even grow up in the village. That is one thing I've discovered. Mm -hmm. So if I had grown up in the village, the villagers don't know the value of what they have. Mm, because they're already yeah, used to it. Yeah, they are used to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are used to it. So the idea is to preserve it, to cover the gap. So that is the why of this book. That's that, why that's you wrote it. That's the why it. of the book. What was the experience like putting this together? It's hectic. <laughs> it's really, really hectic. Though it's easy to go by because I had people who are still users of the language. I'm a user of the language. And certain things I don't, I don't even ask because I have partake in the exercise myself. So I, 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 I could speak the language. I could write. I, I partake you, in you, most you, ceremonies. You can write in yes, the language. Yes, I can write in the language. I can read in the language. Interesting. And I've not gone to, I've not learned it anywhere anyway. I wow. think I'm using my sixth sense, if you allow me to say so. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm using sixth sense. Wow. Now, uh, let's um, provide some education right. for somebody out there who, who, who is very curious. Okay. Um, the Zuru people today, if we are talking about their native land, if we are talking about their primary base, okay. if I may use home, home, home place, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. That would be Kebi, somewhere in Kebi, Kebi State, yes. right? Kebi South. Kebi that's South. Zuru. Yes, that's Zuru. Oh, that's Zuru. So even when you say Kebi, you are right, because my people deforested Kebi. They made Kebi State what it is today. Mm. Yes, we deforested Kebi. If not for the Lilna, that is the Zuru people, Kebi certainly will not have been what it is. We deforested the land. 
until we migrated down to where we are occupying now. An element of my people who were left behind in Jega, mm -hmm. in uh, Aleru, yeah. in Gumi, they have houseanized. They have lost their cultural identity. To the houses. Yes, to the houses. But then, they still know that this is our root. This is our origin. In fact, that reminds me of something I was trying to explain in the book. There is one uh, meat spiced. They call it kilishi. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, kilishi? kilishi, of course. Very good. Yeah. My people are the origin of kilishi. Hey. Yes. The man who is behind kilishi, his name is Kulshu. 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 Yes, Kulshu is his name. That's where Kilishi came from. Yes, that's where the word, oh that's, the derivative, that's the derivative for the word Kilishi. Mm. It was the Hausa Fulani man who could not pronounce the indigenous name of Kilishi. He said Kilishi, Kilishi. In an attempt to pronounce Kilishi. That's how we ended up with Kilishi. Uh, yes. Kilishi. <laughs> uh, but, but let me tell you the story behind the story. Okay. Yes, it was a, a Zulu man, uh, 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 a Fulani man rather, took a Zulu man and he was wearing his cartoons for him. Okay. And at, the, at one point, he is, an average Zulu man is a hunter. So each time he kills a buffalo or a wild animal and the rest of them, those days, they use ash to preserve meat. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Immediately they, they, they slaughter the animal, disassemble, disassemble it, they use ash and rub it. Mm. Then she dry it. Mm. What you people call tinko here in yeah. Lagos, Yoruba. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it, it, the idea is for it not to ferment. Mm. Uh -huh. Ferment. So that's why it will not ferment. So it tastes like salt at one point. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Fulanis, each time they come to that particular man, he gives them this smoked dry meat. So it tastes very sweet. Sweet. And the man who gives them this meat, his name is Kulshu. So each time they want to go see him, this, they will call him, instead of calling him Kulshu, they call him Kilishi. By this. So the, the Kilishi that later became, the word that later became Kilishi was an update by the Hausa people who later used granite paste to prepare it instead of the original. Oh my goodness. Uh, you, uh, you know, you know. <sighs> Ah, oh, Nigeria needs to find itself. Because, you know, everybody is stuck with Hausa Ibus and Yorubas. I okay. mean, in the, in the big cities oh, all right. and all that. We think Nigeria is about the Hausa Ibus and Yorubas. No, 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 no. Even our politics is about no. the Hausa Ibus and no, Yorubas no, no, and all no. that. That's a wrong... Uh... Yeah, because there, there are so many cultures, so many ethnic nationalities in this country. Yes. And when you dig into their history, like what you're telling me now, yes. it is just mind-blowing. Yes, honestly. It is mind blowing, and um, a lot of things. Before I come to what some of the things you wrote here, in your book you have photos of of this, yes, right? In yes, your book, well, what, yes. what are these? Well, this is my uh, let me call it kitchen intensu, uh, where you serve your husband. A woman use this as dish to serve her husband. So this is this is like a... yes, yes. This particular one now is the one for the food. This one, the big one? Yes, so we call it Ihono. Ihono. That is calabash. This is where I put my food. Yes, made for food, yes. <laughs> you put your food. Mm? Yes. While this one is used for water. This is water? Yes. Water to drink or water wash hands? Water to drink. Or water to drink. to drink and to wash How can this be for water side? when there is no, a No, 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 I, a hole I, I, no. I use this for something. Please, you <laughs> oh, might just... Okay, yes, okay. Yes, I wanted to say yes, that. Um, yes. Maybe there's on a the, on the mind the that one. On the eh? mind the hole. Okay. <laughs> yes. Then um, this is This what? is for soup. Soup? Yes, this is for soup. Oh, okay. Mm. So I have my... Um, what, what do you use? Ihono. Ihono here. Uh, yes. I eat, uh, for food, yes. I put soup. Put them yeah, inside soup. That's true. Hmm, that's interesting. True. Okay, this is what. Yeah. So this is the arrangement. It goes okay. back. Oh, this is how it. This yes. is how it goes. Then right? you cover. And you cover like that. That's so, and then you carry it. That's right. Hmm. Now the woman now carries carries it and presents it to her husband. To her husband. In a kneeling position, anyway. In a kneeling position. Yes. Hmm. The Zulu women are too loyal to a fault. 
too loyal. They are too loyal to a fall. If you know what it means, that's what we call Golmo, just as it is in the case of the Bible, when Jacob had to labor, the labor, who had to labor for Rachel. Oh, yes, I so remember. That, that is our culture. So if you know what it means to labor for your in-law for seven years before you are given a wife, you know that that woman is a gold. So the so yeah 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 I remember I read that in your yeah, book. So yeah. if I want to marry if I want to marry you have to live a seven woman, years, yes. I will work for her father for seven, seven years. years. That is Golmo. Seven good years, not more. Seven no. years, not more, not less. What am What am I going to be doing? What kind of work? Of course, farm work and I, over I, other, or oversight functions, like roofing his house during December. The young men of today, they don't value. No, 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 no. Yeah. They, they don't even do. They can't, <laughs> including me, that I'm talking seven, to. Yeah, I'm afraid. Seven years. <laughs> seven good years. Wow. In farm labor, that is contract. It's a marriage contract before you are given a wife. Now, in, in answering my question, you said that um, women, Zuru women, are very loyal. Is that what makes it's a, them yes, loyal? It's a, yes, that makes because them... Because a man has worked for... It's part of what makes them loyal. We don't not divorce. divorce. We don't divorce our women. At all? No, 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 no. There is no divorce in Zuru land. Mm. No divorce. Once you are married to a woman, you are married to one woman but one. Oh, there's no polygamy? No, there's polygamy on conditions. On conditions. Very, very rare. For instance, on the note of childbearing, if my Golomo wife mm -hmm. cannot bear children, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I might be forced to engage myself in another seven years, Golomo, to pick a wife. Eh? And oh, you yes. go and do another seven yes, years? Yes, yes. For another but, woman? But, eh? but yes, for another woman. But in this case, it will be seven years around the clock. Maybe okay. around three years or so. Then the remaining years, the the the, the initiate, the Golmo initiate mm -hmm. will balance, will assist you balance the remaining years. Okay. Maybe four or three years out of the years, and you follow the right process of marrying a wife. The reason why it is like that is because no Zuru woman will want her to be married just like that. It is a pride that it's this pride man and, and dignity. Served. Yes, he, he paid his yes, dues. yes. But how yes. do you juxtapose that with betrothals? Because it's also in the Zuru culture. You okay. wrote here where okay. a, a young boy and a young girl can parents can sign a contract for them to get married. In fact, even before they were born. That, that is true. Even before they were born, you sign a contract, and I think I've just. By reason of my research, I discovered there is a common thing in Africa, even in Yoruba land. Yeah, 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 you could, yeah, yes, arranged yes. marriages. Yes, yes. In fact, they even specify if this man, if this boy, if this baby is a girl child, be left assured that my son will marry him. And that's it. And that's it. No, nothing. Can nothing. Do that. And nothing okay. changes. But it doesn't change the fact that the boy will still do it seven years. No, no, it doesn't change it. He'll still do it seven years. In, in fact, they have started. They have started observing the culture by that. They're Apart from Daniel Obama, who else is a Zuru person that, that I know? Uh, well, uh, we have a couple of them. We have. I'm uh, just curious. Just give me one name that I'll, that will, I'll, I'll be like, uh, oh, so he's Zuru. Okay. Uh, Major General Sani Sami. Oh. Yes, who is the Emir of Zuru. I don't know why we always. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's Emir of Zuru. Yes, presently the Emir of Zuru. Okay. And uh, the elder brother of uh, General Ishaya. Uh, okay. That's Musa Bama in the then drug law here yeah, in Lagos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who one time said he is Zuru Marahaj instead of Guru Marahaj. <laughs> May he so rest in peace. He so rest yes, in he peace. He has passed on. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And okay. Uh, quite a number of them. Wow. We have General Tanku Ayuba who has also passed on. Oh, Tanku Ayuba was yes, Zuru. Yes. And uh, we have General Ango, one time custom chairman. Mm, okay. Yes, he's still alive. You, you know the average southerner? Okay. thinks that everybody from the north is Hausa. No, 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 please. No, 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 no. You, you know, I am not a Hausa have, have, have you observed that? I've observed it. It's a very big problem. Yes, um, and it's, it's not a problem for those who, who know. As I speak to you, I am not a Hausa man. I will not be a Hausa man. Even if I die today and come back tomorrow, I can't be a Hausa man. I cannot. <laughs> I am not. And I will not be. <laughs> <laughs> if I am not a Zuru man, then for Christ's sake, uh, what am I? I can't be Yoruba. 
I can't be an Igbo man. That's your identity. I, that's my identity. I'm a Zulu man. So, so, so why should I not be proud to tell you I'm a Zulu man? Mm. I can't be a Hausa man. <laughs> I can't. I can't see no, no, that. No, yeah. no, no, no. Bow, bow out. No. Unfortunately, we don't have time. No. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for joining us yes, on Channel yes, Book thank Club. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Yes, my pleasure. Let me take some water. Yeah, please do. As we round up. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Zuru. The Zuru way. The Zuru way. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Let me also share with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so exciting speaking with Bawa. Bawa Amos. So insightful. Well, up next is a book launch. There's a new book in town. And we were there when it was introduced to the public. Enjoy this. Military men and civilians gather here at Naval Hall, Headquarter Nigerian Army Ordnance Corps in Lagos, for the official presentation of Abimbala Ogubi's debut book, The Military Wife. The author, who is an architect, a pastor, and principal partner of Q Designs Consultants Limited, has been married to the former medical corps commander of the Nigerian Army, Major General Obashin Ogumbi, since 1989. Mrs. Ogumbi's The Military Wife is an inspirational memoir that uses the author's experiences to educate readers on the structure and traditions of the Nigerian military the challenges military families face, and how to be a successful military wife. The chairman of the occasion, Major General Abiodun Rol, in his opening remarks, celebrates the author for giving voice to all military wives through her new book. What we have just done is to bring out a thing that has been silent in all our wives. I'm glad you gave voice to it. I'm glad you gave print to it. The president of the Defense and Police Officers' Wives Association, Depoa, Barista Mrs. Victoria Rabo, speaks as a special guest of honor and further states the importance of the book. This book is by all means a brilliant and well-captured piece of writing fit to be included in the growing repository of information available to students, military and non-military wives, and scholars interested in expanding their knowledge base of communal dynamics in the Nigerian Armed Forces. And then the unveiling of the 237-page book. We unveil. I'd like to thank the Almighty God, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. He's a God that has given me enablement. He's a God that has helped me even to think of writing a book. But I also want to give honor to my late father, Sir Jacob Oyekola Afolabi, who always said, Abimbola, you must write a book. So my husband is a second chief editor. He read every chapter. He crossed every I, dotted every T. All the military um, protocols I should, <laughs> things I should not have said, he crossed them out. And so, and every time I put it down, he asked me, where's the next chapter? Where's the next chapter? Where's the next chapter? If anyone could have encouraged me in this book, I would say it is him.
this is where we have to end the show today. As always, we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.